you know, it was a long time ago, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he got me a copy or something. He said, Jonas, let us keep these. They broke the spike off. Yeah. Getting stones out of horses' hooves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the can opener and the plate, they allowed to keep them. But I've still got my, the new one. It's, oh, it's like a razor. It's yeah. uh, one out in the SAS. It's good. But you had also a, a para knife. The big I, ones. I, I, I had a, um, a Fairburn fighting knife. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was. I, I didn't have one issue. Some people had an issue. Some didn't. I do um, had one, and uh, Les has it now. Oh, is he? Yeah. My um, school time friend and uh, after school, we, he went in the RAF. He actually gave it to me. It's one of the Wilkinson uh, Fairburn ones. Yeah. Um, when I was wounded, uh, the trousers we had. We had special trousers. Right, they were smart um, trousers, but they had big, two big pockets, mm -hmm. and they also had a knife pocket in the side. And uh, my knife was in there. When I was wounded, one of the chaps said, "Blonde, I can't think of his name." He says, "You won't be in that anymore." I go into it. I must have been in the days, you know. But I lost it in any case for the Germans. Uh -huh. But uh, by God, you could shave with those things. Amazing. They were blood razors. They were. Beautiful um, fighting knife. I'd like one on the ball actually at home now. Well, the Yanks had a smasher with knuckle dusters on the handle. Really vicious looking things they were. Yeah. And, uh, the last time I saw one of those was when I was in the Shawnwood. Oh, right. Stretcher. That when the Germans first came in, anybody with knives, have it, and all of a sudden, shoo, a knife went stuck in the door beside it. <laughs> He never found me. I don't think I know he's something, something through it. It's eh? <laughs> one they didn't shoot us. Actually, they treated us quite well. Oh, the old uh, rifle valise here. Oh, it's a brim one. That's a carrier. Ah, that's what they yeah. picked yeah. me up and put yeah. me on, yeah. <laughs> Than this guy. A funny thing, he, he retired to Cornwall. Uh, our, our, he got com he, uh, when he got back after Arnhem, um, he got promoted to lieutenant. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he came out of the army, he went to he retired down. Uh, I suspect was regular was a regular soldier. Um, he lived at Hale and uh, he died of cancer. Because when I, I first went down there. Um, Pearson Orbin um, said, oh, Dennis Gay came to dinner here one night, but after that he died. Sure. Yeah. Oh, Pearson Orbin. We had a, a dinner just uh, last Friday of uh, East, uh, um, August. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was alive, we used about, the whole branch used to go to his, his house for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> last Friday of August. So the the branches kept it up. Yeah, brilliant. And so we have a well, we had a buffing uh, dinner this this time, but uh, yeah, he was a character. He was. He came down from. We went to a. It was a Walter Mitty I was talking about that uh, was in the Fusiliers. When he died, we saw, everybody turned out at his funeral just the same. They all knew it was a water mini, but Pierce was there. And uh, coming from Bodmin down to where I was, come down a hill, and there's an old railway line goes across the road, and it says 20 mile an hour, otherwise it. Pierce went down about 50. Took off like an aeroplane, hit the, hit the big stone wall, petrol everywhere. He gets out and the police, actually it was a police car very near him because he got out and he got his cigarettes out because the light was sitting on it. The <laughs> Bobby went mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a cracking old chap, he was. His son is now Lord St. Levan. Um, his brother was the, the Lord and uh, he died. But there's no... Uh, no males, and uh, Piers' son, James, has become Lord of, uh, Lord sort of, of uh, 
St Michael's Mount. Oh yeah. That was their that was their uh, home, but it's National Trust. But of course the family have got it for life. Mm -hmm. you know. I did uh, DZ Marshall on uh, on the uh, St Michael's Mount, the SAS. Uh, nobody knew it was except us. That was uh, called the Pilgrims, the uh, free drop people. They dropped onto a lawn. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I got this radio and they said, well, they were dropping from helicopter from the cold rows. Uh, you know, you're in control and <laughs> Typical SAS, we've got different frequencies. <laughs> they came down and I couldn't talk to them, they couldn't talk to me, but so they jumped. <laughs> One went in the river, in the uh, sea, but I'm, I'm sure that was deliberate because there was some uh, SPS uh, rescue. <laughs> and they said, don't tell anybody the SAS has dropped, you know, these are SAS. And, uh, Lord of Vance's grandchildren there were going around saying, what troop are you in the SAS? <laughs> <laughs> so we went in the SAS church. <laughs> Our um, sting guns were different. Right. They were more luxurious, you know, like with the pistol grips on them. Oh yeah. Like the Tommy gun. They were a bit better made than uh, the old ones. These uh, old ones here. Yeah. When you know, I was at school and the, the war had started, I, I, I was working um, in the evenings as a well, chap, it was a big double garage you got and you got some lathes to that and we were making parts in there mm -hmm. and uh, nobody knew it was secret parts and they were part of, uh, I was thinking part of the same gun, a sear or something. I think it was the, was it the Mark I that had the, uh, the wooden, wooden furniture on it? Because uh, everyone said it was the, it was the, it was the nice it was the more sought after weapon. Yeah, the well the we always had the butts and ever the original ones were these old. Uh, oh right, the ones. Ones. they were the first ones, and uh, they used to go off in no time. You know, you could shoot yourself with them. <laughs> <laughs> you only got to knock them in the start of fire. <coughs> The, 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 could you select between semi-auto and all and, and yeah right. yeah you can have single shot because um, what's his name chap in prison came with me uh, I think he was in the tenth battalion actually he uh, he had a sten and they were in the woods fighting and a German was firing at him with a smizer and he laid down with a tree with the two trunks and sort of V at the bottom firing through there and he said he fired three single shots at this German put it on auto as he fired the auto he thinks he hit the German but he got a bullet right between his eyes oh, and you could put a finger there right there and it never it never killed him it went down he was because he was laying down it went down behind his left eye broke his jaw came out between his jugular vein and his windpipe good God sure. and uh he was in hospital with me and his jaw locked because it smashed his jaw and so we had a Red Cross Christmas parcel, it was the biggest parcel we had, but it was all, mostly soups and chocolate. So I had the chocolate and he had the soups, <laughs> <laughs> we had to share this parcel. Yeah, he came free. Um, he lost the sight of his left eye afterwards. Um, it's a shame really because he, he was a banknote engraver, you know, <laughs> and uh, lost the sight of the eye. 